Let me read to you a passage from the 23rd chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 13 to 22. It's the Gospel for Monday of the 21st week of ordinary time. St. Matthew writes, Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You lock the kingdom of heaven before men. You do not enter yourselves, nor do you allow entrance to those trying to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You traverse sea and land to make one convert, and when that happens you make him a child of Gehenna twice as much as yourselves. Woe to you blind guides, who say, If one swears by the temple, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gold of the temple, one is obligated. Blind fools, which is greater, the gold, or the temple that made the gold sacred? And you say, If one swears by the altar, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gift on the altar, one is obligated. You blind ones, which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? One who swears by the altar swears by it and all that is upon it. One who swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. One who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who is seated on it. That's from Matthew chapter 23 verse 13 to 22. What does it suggest to us? Well, as is well known, prior to his election, Pope Benedict XVI often referred to what he called the dictatorship of relativism. He brought into high relief the philosophical assumption that objective truth, especially religious truth, is either non-existent or unattainable, and that any claim to possess the truth is necessarily a mere subject of opinion. Relativism involves the view that whatever be a person's judgment on reality, specifically its moral and religious dimensions, that conviction is just a personal impression lacking the means and the note of objective validation. So the truth is ultimately relative to each person. I suppose the occasion prompting the rise and prevalence of this assumption, which acts as a prejudice against the notion of objective truth, especially religious and moral truth, is the presence in human society of radically diverse convictions. How can one possibly be sure of attaining, of having attained the truth if there is profound and strongly held disagreement? As the saying goes, 40,000 Frenchmen can't be wrong. But we don't have that kind of agreement. Now, whatever of certain philosophical discussions, to deny the validity of all claims to having the truth flies in the face of ordinary human convictions and of common sense. We are all aware that it is possible to be right and that it is possible to be wrong. It is like the philosophical discussions as to the existence of free will. The fact is that we know that, to a greater or lesser extent, people are free and may be held accountable for their choices. So too we know that one can attain the truth and that one can be in objective error. What the fact of disagreement points to is not that all are right and that no one is wrong and that therefore truth is relative, but the truth, especially in religion and morals, is very often not attained. It requires a great effort to attain the truth and especially religious truth and it is very possible to be blind to it. The obviously valid philosophical principle that something cannot be right and wrong simultaneously means that some in the world, and in matters of religious truth probably only a minority, are right, and many others are wrong. 
Some see the light and others are blind to it. In our gospel passage I read earlier from Matthew chapter 23, verse 13 to 22, our Lord inveighs against the scribes and Pharisees who he charges are blind. They are blind and they lead others blindly into perdition. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You traverse sea and land to make one convert, and when that happens you make him a child of Gehenna twice as much as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides! There are two obvious features in that which Christ condemns in the scribes and Pharisees here. Firstly, that they are blind, and so lead others into harm. And secondly, that their blindness is very culpable. They are hypocrites, and woe is coming upon them. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! This, then, is a warning to us all that we must strive conscientiously to seek the truth of God with hearts and minds open to the light of the Holy Spirit. As were the scribes and Pharisees, we can very easily be in convinced error while thinking we are in the truth. Our mistaken blindness can be deeply culpable. How so? By secret disposition and choice, our will can fail to be attuned to the will of God. Our starting points, our fundamental principles, our preferred assumptions can set us against the truth revealed by God and render us blind. That is the danger. Its root is the love of sin and self, which prevents us from attaining the truth revealed by God in Christ. Being blind ourselves, we can lead others astray in the process. Because of our fundamentally social nature, we do not go either to heaven or to hell alone. We bring others with us, one way or the other. This is the awful responsibility we all have of sincerely seeking to attain the truth, because it is the truth which will set us free now and hereafter. Let us take our cue from what Christ says to the scribes and the Pharisees standing before him. It is imperative that we not allow ourselves to be blind as to the truth of Christ, at least not culpably so. We have a responsibility to do all we can to attain the light of God with certainty and with clarity. On one occasion the people brought a clamouring beggar into the presence of our Lord. The beggar had been importunately demanding with loud and unremitting cries that Jesus of Nazareth hear him. Christ asked him what he wanted of him. The beggar, Bartimaeus by name, said, Lord, that I may see. Let that prayer be our own. Lord, that I may see Christ who is the light of my life, and that I may be able to guide others to him who is the light of life and of the world.